Hello. In this video, I plan and hope and am excited to look at the raw depth data, meaning not the depth image, not the depth values um, converted to a grayscale image, but actually the raw depth data that's coming out of the Kinect itself. So again, with the version 2 Kinect, you're getting numbers between 0 and 4500. With the version 1 Kinect, you're getting numbers between 0 and 2048. And to demonstrate this, what I have over here is a simple processing sketch that's drawing a whole lot of dots on a plane in three-dimensional space, and that plane is rotating rather slowly. So what I want to do is, and this is what's known as a point cloud, I want to take every point on this plane and give it its actual physical real sp space. No, wait, 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 wait. Let me say that again. Okay. The Kinect is seeing all these points. I am all of these points in a room. And the Kinect is seeing me, and I want to move these points around. What this is like the weirdest thing I've ever had to explain, and it's like the sim it's like totally simple. It'll just make sense if I just showed it to you. Yet I insist on trying to explain it in this weird way. <laughs> but I want to take all the points that the Kinect are seeing in this physical three-dimensional space where I am, and I want to move these virtual dots, which are on the screen, in this virtual 3D space, and that's known as a point cloud. This is how you might start to build a 3D model of what the Kinect is seeing in the space. So the, 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 the key difference here, uh, so one thing that I had before in the previous video is we were looking at this pixel-based image, right? This idea of each image, each pixel of the depth image has a value between 0 and 255, and it's a brightness value based on how far or close it is. Now, the information is stored in exactly the same way inside of this, a big array, um, but uh, instead the numbers are between 0 and 4,500. So how do we work with these numbers? So let's come over here and uh, we're going to do a couple things in this video, but this first point cloud example, I mostly have the code already. So you can see here that what I'm doing is looping through the connects width and height. Again, I'm skipping because I don't need to do every single point. I don't need to do all of the points just to visually get this effect. Um, and then I'm finding the offset, it offset into that array. So x plus y times connect to dot width. So that's how I'm going to look up into that big array of all those depth values. Now what is that array? That array is called, is, I get that array by saying connect to dot get raw depth. So when I said get depth image, that gives me a p image object with pixel values all in it. Now I just get a big integer array. Again, those integers are between 0 and 4,500. So they're in that array, and I can say the depth is, uh, I already used the depth is the offset into that array. Now, there's something else going on now in this function. What it's doing is there's a function here called depth to point cloud position, x, y, d. x is the pixel x, y is the pixel y, d is the depth that the Kinect is seeing. There's, sort of, there's a strange thing that's happening, which is that the pixel, we, we look at all these, these uh, pixels in a grid and we get this raw depth value, but the Kinect itself, um, there's some math involved in how that can actually convert it to real measurements in physical space. Like where is the actual X, where is the actual Y, based on like how the camera is seeing it. So in order to do that, this particular example has just this function, which essentially you want to download these examples and copy this verbatim. Um, but this function is using all of these kind of uh, parameters that are built into the hardware itself. So these are like a whole set of numbers and values that are just part of the Kinect's calibration and you kind of multiply and divide by these numbers and you get the actual value of where it is in space. It's sort of an interesting problem. I would love to like go through it at some point, but right now I'm sort of inclined to sort of skip it and say the interesting thing is what you're getting is if you give the raw depth value, the pixel X and the pixel Y and use that function, you're going to get the X, Y and depth values in millimeters back of where those things are in physical space. So I don't want to in fact draw, the. this is what you're seeing in this particular visualization right now is just all of these pixels at their exact x, y, and x, y value with a zero depth. So what I want to do is change this program to say this actual physical point, this p vector, the p vector is an object that has an x, a y, and a z. I want to draw the vertex at point dot x, point dot y, and now point 
point dot z. And in order to make this a little bit better, I'm going to skip fewer pixels. I'm going to skip only four. And I'm going to run this again. And now you'll see here I am. This is the point cloud. This is me in three-dimensional space. So if I zoom in on this, you can start to see like what's going on. This over here, by the way, is the wall. It's funny how I can like put my hands on the wall. It's almost as if I'm distorting the wall. But really what I'm doing is I'm casting a shadow. Um, so it's a little bit strange to see this view of me and my connect. I can like, no, I, I wouldn't uh, give myself a hug. That's a little bit weird too. I was like, punching is weird, hugging, anything that you do, I don't know. Just scratch all that. But you can see here, this is now a visualization in three-dimensional space. So you could connect these points with lines. You could color them. There's a way of actually getting the RGB values. And so you could see like the colors that are on my shirt on these points as well. This is a road you could go down. And I find this road to be particularly interesting. But what, uh, and uh, you can see that I'm, I'm using just a simple Y rotation. So now I'm kind of like spinning around this image, which has now gone off screen. Um, but if I zoom back in, you can sort of see it's over there. Um, so this is kind of the start of sort of thinking of like, what can you do with these raw depth values? I think what would be a useful demonstration now is to look at how might I actually pick out just me? So you can visually see just me, but there's a sort of mess. There's like all this stuff over here. There's this over here. Um, there's actually like this pole over here that's being picked up by the Kinect. So what, I, you know, what if I just wanted to like even only get my hand right here? What I want to do is try to calibrate a threshold. So what if I want the Kinect only to see, the Kinect's over here, remember? So it's, it's to the left of me. I don't know what, what side that is uh, you're viewing. But what if I want to say only look at the pixels in between here and here? And that would conceivably get my hand, right? How would I do that? How would I look, only look at the pixels between a certain minimum and a certain maximum? Let's look at that. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as, um, I don't know what to call this, min max threshold. Um, and I'm going to get rid of all this 3D stuff for right now. Because uh, I'm not going to do this with, you could do this with visualizing the point cloud still. But I'm going to do this with just, uh, and I'm, I'm going to look at all the pixels. So I want to do x plus plus and y plus plus. And somebody remind me, what's the size? 4, 5, 12, 4, 84. Is that right? I don't know if that's right. Um, and so hopefully that's right. And then what I want to do is I don't need end shape. I don't need, I don't need begin shape. I don't need any of this stuff. What I want to do, again, and I don't need this depth to point cloud thing. I'm taking all of that out. Because what I want to do right now is just go through this double nested loop and look at every depth value. 0 and 4,500. But I only want to like count the ones that are between 200 and 400, or between 500 and 800. What is that? What's that minimum and what's that maximum threshold? OK, let's make this happen. So the first thing that I should do, probably, is uh, I would like to make myself, just to be able to see this, I'm going to make myself an image. And I'm going to create a blank image, which is the same as the width and height of the Kinect. Uh, and it's an RGB image. So this is a function in processing create image that just makes a blank image. And then, uh, whoops. And then what I'm going to do right now is I am going to in here, I'm going to, uh, right here, I'm going to say image.load pixels because I want to operate, I need to operate on the pixels of that image. I'm going to set pixels in that image based on the raw depth. And at the end, I'm going to need to say image.update pixels. And I'm also then going to want to draw that image. So just to make sure that things are working, what I'm going to do is right here inside, sorry, this is where all of the important code needs to happen right now. It needs to happen right here inside this double loop, right? For every x, for every y, I want to set a pixel in the image. Image dot pixels index offset equals, and I'm I'm just going to set it to be, you know, some color right now, some purplish color, and run this, and we should see that that's working. Uh, okay, so you can see this purplish color. I clearly got the size of the window wrong. Let me just let me just get that for you guys for really quick. So if I go back and look at my RGB depth test, um, ah, this isn't telling me. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's just be smart about this. Um, I want to just know what those values are. I'm going to print out. I'm going to print out the the 
the depth width and the depth height. Really quickly, uh, we can look in the console, 512, 424. I knew I, had some, I was close, so let me just get that right now, and I, I don't need this much of the console here, and I can get back to the important part of the code. We can run this, we can see, okay, purple. So I have now filled every pixel on the screen with purple. But what I want to do is fill every pixel on the screen based on the depth. So for example, what if I were to just say, if D is greater than 300 and D is less than 1500, image.pixels offset uh, is that, otherwise image.pixels offset is black. So what I'm doing is I'm saying only if the only if the distance is between 300 and 1500, let me see a purple color. Otherwise, let me see a black color. And when I run this, we should see, oh my god, I can't believe what I guessed. I'm like a genius here. I somehow guessed a pretty reasonable uh, threshold. So you can see here that now what I've done, and now you see like all computer vision problems melt away in a way. Like uh, what I could do now is like it's so easy to find the, I mean not easy, but it's much easier now to find the contours. Now, I have this problem of this wall over here. So how do I get rid of this wall? Well, first of all, the real way that I get rid of that wall is by not doing my connect stuff right next to a wall. So unfortunately, this is like a bad, I, I need a better setup, I think, for doing these videos, which someday maybe I will find. But what I want to do, let's at least see if I can get the hands. So one thing you'll notice here is that the hands go away once you're about a foot and a half from the connect. So what I really want is between about, I don't know, between zero and maybe like 500. So there's probably a better way for me to calibrate this <laughs> than just randomly picking numbers. But let's give this a try. You can see nothing, 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 nothing. Oh, that didn't do much any good. So, <laughs> so let's, uh, uh, so I, you know, I, whoops, that's not gonna do me any good either. Uh, let's do between like 200 and 1,000. Nothing, you can see, uh, like, right, but if I come in a bit, so you can see here how like I'm able to pick out only my hand. Uh, again, I've got this problem with the wall, so I'm going to do something about that in a second uh, to maybe try to like just like not look at the pixels on this side of the window, I guess. Um, but you can see how you, I'm starting to find this idea of a minimum and a maximum threshold, and really I should make these variables. So I'm going to say a min thresh is 200 and max thresh is 1000, and you know, I might as well make these floats. Because what could be also useful, I think the way that I could calibrate this, right? Here's a great way I could calibrate this. So in between the minimum threshold and the maximum threshold, what I might do is up here, I might say min threshold equals map the mouse's x value, which goes between 0 and width, to between 0 and 4,500. Uh, and the maximum threshold, I'm going to do y, which between 0 and height. 0 and 4,500, and then I'm just going to print out those values. I could draw them on the screen, which would probably be, let's draw them on the screen. So then down here, I'm going to just fill 255, text size uh, 32, uh, text min thresh plus, oh, I got to use um, double quotes, max thresh, you know, 10 comma 64. So here we should see on the screen these values. So now what I need to do is figure out like what's, a good, uh, whoops, wait, x is going between, I'm doing, <laughs> I've lost what I'm doing. Something is wrong here. Uh, mouse x between, oh, this is max thresh. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, okay, so now you can see I'm able to like calibrate the minimum threshold. And let's calibrate the maximum threshold, like how far back am I seeing? But the minimum needs to be higher, and then I don't want to see too far back. So there we go. So this I feel like is good. If I'm getting my hand right now, it's between about 480 and 827. So let's, like, only if I'm standing right here, of course. But, you know, you could design an interactive exhibit where you put some footprints on the floor and the person has to stand there. So I'm now going to keep my hand, boy, this is a long video, I'm at 15 minutes. I'm going to keep my hand around here. I'm going to make the minimum and maximum 480 and 830. So now I can comment these lines of code out. And I'm going to say uh, 480 and 830. And I'm going to run this again. And we can see I'm kind of I'm getting my hand like really, I'm getting pretty good tracking of my hand. So one thing that I'm going to do now, of course, 
which I think would be useful, is try to get rid of this wall over here. So, you know, the wall is a bit of a problem, but I can kind of uh, do a little bit of a cheat here, I think, which is also to say if and, and x is greater than, I don't know what, how many pixels do you think that was? That was probably about uh, 75 pixels. So uh, maybe it's a little bit more. So I'm just like not allowing me to measure anything that's like 100 pixels over. So you can see I kind of got rid of that wall and now I have my hand. So this is great. You can see like this really nice clean outline of my hand because this is my other hand coming in. It's not inside until it gets there, right? It's outside of that maximum threshold and now it's inside of that minimum threshold. It's funny how it like, uh, oh no, my arm is coming in. So of course, if my whole body comes in, now you can see my whole body is here, which is another thing that I want to look at. So um, you can see how this minimum and maximum threshold is working pretty well. So I think this, is, this wraps up this video. I'm going to continue this exact example. You could try this on your own as an exercise before you get to the next video. How would I actually just find the center of my hand? So I could control a processing sketch now by moving my hand around, or moving this hand around, or what if I do both hands? So how would I do that? This is, I feel like I'm, like I'm some sort of like magic person here. Um, so that's what I'm going to look at in the next video. How do I find the center of my hand and control something else like a little like snake that's moving around the screen, or make a particle system come out of my hand? We'll look at that in the next video. And another thing I want to look at is how would I find the top of my head? So if I'm the human being here, how do I know if I'm bending down or standing up? Okay, so we'll look at that in the next video. Thanks for sticking with me here. I think this is actually starting to come together. Okay.